time to watch your favorite show, the flip side of the coin. You've been fed the news, now you'll get the other side of the coin. With your host Pastor Jose Cozio. Radio Moneda 2016 at gmail.com One more time, this is your friend Jose Cozio. And we are here interviewing and, and uh, having a good conversation with Reverend uh, William Cook, who is the founder of the Virginia chapter of the, of the uh, Black Robe Regiment. Sir, thank you very much again for coming with us. So good to be here. And uh, we're going to ask you now about some more ex specific examples of the roles of the pastors in the American Revolution. I'd love to do that. Um, Lexington was the spark. That the Battle of Lexington was the spark that ignited the revolution. Word of that of that um, battle spread like wildfire across the colonies, and uh, pastor after pastor after pastor immediately shouldered his own musket and called the men of his church together to go fight the British. Mm -hmm. Joab Houghton was a pastor in New Jersey. And when, he, when the news of what had happened in Lexington reached him three days after it happened, he called all the people of his church together and he said, Brethren, the British are murdering our brethren of New England. Who goes with me to Boston? With that, he shouldered his own musket and led all the men of his church off to fight the British. There were other examples. Um, David Avery of Gageboro, Vermont, served as a chaplain and captain of the men from his church marching to Boston and being present for duty during battle. He was a great encouragement to the troops as he was seen conspicuously praying for victory and spent the weary winter of 1777 to 1778 with General Washington and his soldiers. At the Lexington Alarm, Reverend Captain Daniel Grossfiener of Pomfret, Connecticut, marched in the ranks to Cambridge. When the militia was called upon to oppose the British troops, the young patriotic minister shouldered his own musket and marched with two companies part of the way on their hurried march to Concord. Another example is Jonathan French of Andover, Massachusetts. When he heard about the battle at Bunker Hill, he marched to war carrying both his medical case and musket. He served as a drummer during the war and fought at Castle Williams in Boston Harbor. In 1777, when Pastor Samuel Ells of Bradford, Connecticut, heard that Washington and his troops were in dire need of assistance, he read the notice from his pulpit and then he and his men formed a company of which he was the captain. A friend of Generals Washington and Gates and many other officers from New England, Pastor Hezekiah Smith of Haverville, Massachusetts, served as a chaplain to the Continental Army and occasionally as aide de camp to numerous commanders. He boldly declared that the Battle of Saratoga was the grandest conquest ever gained since the creation of the world. These were great patriots. John Cleveland of Ipswich, Massachusetts, recruited his entire congregation into the Continental Army and then joined himself. On, it's interesting, in, we, we talk about Virginia. In Virginia, one of the most notable figures was a, was a gentleman named John Peter Gabriel Muhlenberg, who was a, he passed, it was a pastor of English-speaking Church of English congregations and German-speaking Lutheran congregations in the northern Shenandoah Valley. His father was Henry Melchior. Henry Melchior Muhlenberg was actually the founder of the Lutheran Church in America. Muhlenberg, he, he was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, which was the governing body in Virginia at that time. He was present in Richmond on March 23, 1775, when Patrick Henry preached his liberty, gave his liberty or death speech, to, riveted the Burgesses with that speech, give me liberty or give me death. And at the end of his speech, Patrick Henry motioned that Virginia counties be, adopt a state of defense, which would have implied raising militia in those counties. Mm. So without hesitation, it was the pastor, Peter Muhlenberg, who raised his hand and seconded Henry's motion. The motion passed. And while Peter Muhlenberg, his, his, he was nicknamed Peter, when he, was in, when he was in Richmond during that event, 
George Washington approached him and asked him to take, to take a commission in the Continental Army as a colonel and to raise, uh, to raise a regiment, which he did. He was, from, he was from Woodstock, Virginia, and on January 21, 1776, he entered the pulpit of Emmanuel Church in Woodstock for the very last time. He ascended the pulpit and he, and he chose for his text that morning the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, which begins with, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to sow and a time to, to reap. When he got to the eighth, eighth verse, which says, a time for, there's a time for war and a time for peace, in the voice that thundered, he said, in the language of Holy Writ, there is a time for all things, a time to preach and a time to pray, a time to fight. That time has now come. With that, and he had to say it loudly because so many people had come to his church that morning that they were standing out in the church cemetery trying to hear him. So he came down from, he said the benediction at the end of his sermon, he came down from the pulpit took off his, his black robe, and he was, he was in full dress as a Continental Army colonel. He had his sword by his side, which he had with him in the pulpit. He then ordered drums to begin beating for recruits at the rear of the church. And when all was said and done that day and the ensuing days, he recruited 300 men from the frontier to form the 8th Virginia Regiment. It was known as the, the German Regiment. And he led them successfully. He was one of the first to completely man his, his regiment. And he, um, he was a capable, capable military leader. He was eventually pro promoted to brigadier general during the war. He was one of Washington's most capable brigadiers. And uh, when, at the end of the war, he was, he was promoted, or uh, the word is breveted, to major general. He was a major general. And he was seated on horse. He, he actually is seated on horseback in the painting that's in the Capitol by John Trumbull of the surrender of Yorktown. He's seated to Washington's left on a white horse. And um, it's an amazing story. At the end of the war, Peter Muhlenberg, his congregations begged him to come back and be their pastor because he obviously would have been a hero at that time for what he had done in the war. And he responded to, to his flock. He said, I can no longer build the house of God because I'm a, I'm a bloody man now. So he ran for Congress. He, became a, he, he was elected to the first Congress. He was from Pennsylvania. Elected to the first Congress. The, I think the second and fourth Congresses. He was also elected to one term in the Senate. His brother, Frederick, Friedrich Augustus Muhlenberg, who was also a pastor in Rhode Island, New York, initially uh, condemned Peter's decision to leave the pulpit for the battlefield. And they had a, they had a debate in letters, because of course they didn't have email back in those days. They had to do things by, by uh, dispatch. So they had, a, they had a debate in letters back and forth that came to be known as the Battle of the Quills. Around the end of the war, Friedrich Around the end of the war, Friedrich had come around to Peter's way of thinking after his church was burned down in Rhode Island. And he decided to run for Congress, the first Congress, and he was elected to the first Congress. So you had two brothers, two ministers in the first Congress. And Friedrich was elected the first Speaker of the House. Oh, wow. So you have two clergymen in the first Congress. And, and they're, they're, you know, the idea of separation of church and state is so absurd. It's 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 patently absurd. I don't know, I don't know how the the you know Democrats got by with that when, in 1954 when they passed the Johnson Amendment. But I it's it's just it's pure tyranny. It's a deceit. It's falsehood. It's wrong. And th there's nothing in Scripture that says that pastors can't talk about political topics. And uh, in fact, they should, because the church is the, you know the church is the only organization that can secure liberty. So it is with uh, all these important uh, facts that we know now, it is important for also to have our pastors of today to really understand what's going on at this point and how important it is for them to be the leaders on the movement here to 
continue our liberty in this United States. So we thank you, sir, again for, for this segment. And uh, we understand there is a, a conference right now coming Correct. in Virginia Beach. Can you please let us well, know Well, on, on July 8 and 9 in Virginia Beach, uh, Clay Clark and General Flynn are, are leading a conference. It's called the Reawakening Tour, Tour Conference. And as part of that, we are organizing a pastor's summit in conjunction with that that's going to be in a, in a different building from the one where the main conference will be. And our goal is to have 300 pastors attend that event. And um, we're going to have a round table. We're going to hear from several powerful speakers at that time, men that are they're going to talk about the role of the pulpit. It's going to be a powerful time. We're going to have a time of prayer and repentance. And invite yeah. pastors to. Then we're going to challenge them. You need, you need, to, pastors. You need to start thinking about preaching at a minimum at least one election sermon in advance of every election, and teach your flocks how they need to vote and how they need to behave politically. So, liberty is dependent on that. Um, that's what secured liberty in the very beginning of our nation, and that's what's going to do it again. And I've been telling Clay and General Flynn both that that we're not going to get our country back until pastors stand up and do their duty again. So but that's going to happen. And if people are interested in, um, in participating, I've left information with, with the station here. And uh, they can give me a call. I'll give out my cell phone. I don't mind. It's 703-986-8096. 703-986-8096. Or send me an email at revrev at Regiment. Dot us and I will get back to you and I would be delighted to do that we want as many pastors as can to come to rich to come down to Virginia Beach it's going to be one of the most exciting events that you will ever participate in so we want we want as many pastors regardless of race regardless of color regardless of age we want pastors to come so you heard it here and you're all invited May the Lord bless you. This has been the flip side of the coin. You've been fed the news, and you just got the other side of the coin with Pastor Jose Cosio. Do you know what day is today? Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Be faithful to God. Thank you. Until next time. Radio Moneda 2016 at gmail.com.